should be cold. It's, you know, 15 pounds of stainless, solid stainless shaft. Little propeller shaft? Yeah. yeah the guy down, down in uh, Beaufort, the Naval Armor, who makes, makes up all sorts of them. That's propeller shaft, you said? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Mark, what do you use? Black powder or something? Yeah. Yeah. Triple FG. Shock glass. <laughs> 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 oh, fine. Well, can I make a little more appropriate base for you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a one inch straight shaft on there. It goes down. Okay. And, you know, I grew up knowing a side of Jerry that was not always a, a pleasant side. And yet, when he was with his sister, she was dying. I saw something else come out um, that I hadn't seen before, and it was mm -hmm. nice to know that that was there because yeah. I know that we've all had sort of you know we've all had those intermittent adversarial issues. Yeah, and sometimes, <laughs> and, and sometimes <laughs> more than intermittent, you know. Um, and yet there was a side to him that was human and. Mm -hmm did want to connect and did want to join and yeah. did want to be helpful and you know whatever it was about him that found it hard to access that place more consistently it nice did still people. exist yeah. and I was very grateful to experience that from him during my mother's last days. You know Jerry was a uh, constant all the time, it seemed to me, and uh, uh, when he moved out to uh, the Midwest or the West, I guess, mm -hmm. it's called West, and uh, he would call every time uh, during the holidays or one thing or another, and as I wrote to uh, new kids, he always spoke of you, loved you very much, and was very proud, but I always remember the time when we were all, you were all small, we were younger. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in the Penguin Club, and he said, you know, we're, it's a moon tide, and we've got to get up early in the morning. So, Jesus Christ, it was forced GM in the morning. The sun <laughs> wasn't even up. I mean, it was, the sky hadn't even changed. Mm -hmm. And he got everybody up, and we trooped down, and it was a low, low, low tide. And, we, uh, you know, grabbed uh, lobsters and one thing or another. And that was, Jerry loved there were childlike things that he did all the damn time, whether it was the cannon mm -hmm. or, you know, kids or one thing. Adventures. It was adventure all mm -hmm. the time, and there was never a dull moment, that's and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's what I remember Jerry for. I remember all of you when you were younger. We were all, I we were all young. Too. Yes, <laughs> we were all very young. And I have an aunt to add to that who, who had written to me, and she, she shared that her thoughts on Jerry, and that was that he always had a plan, and he always seemed to know where he was going. And and helped me steer away from some faux pas that I could have made otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, you know, I think he did a good job. Yep. Second that. Well, I know Jerry, my father-in-law, was very proud of his grandchildren. He loved having grandsons. And he came out and visited us quite a bit, driving cross-country. Really? It was like nothing. It was like driving around the corner to him. Oh, that's right. He would come out and visit us and would be island. Yeah. That's and, right. you know, he, yeah, he, he never ceased to amaze me. Zoom. I enjoyed, I enjoyed our times together down in Bayview and, you know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of great memories of Jerry. I have a couple of memories. Uh, one is uh, when we were young. Um... I had a, I had come across a gross of uh, M80s uh, through <laughs> contacts here and there, <laughs> and uh, so uh, there's a problem with these M80s, and that is that like this cannon, they were too loud. Yes. You couldn't roll, you couldn't set them off in the neighborhood, the trigger you know calls and so on. So uh, anyway, we went to visit uh, Debbie and B up in North, North Andover, and they conveniently had a little goldfish pond that Jerry had built. And so I said, well, with this water, we can contain the blast from the M80. <laughs> so, 
So we put the M80 in there, and of course the thing blasted off, and of course the pond drained. It was well, it was well made. I mean, it did leak, but it it lifted. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you didn't let me forget it for a decade. But I've got to say, in the in the past decade, there's been no one, no one in the family who's had better, who's been better at when he had something going on here about what went on the day he was born, when he was in his 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I mean, he called me and he said, Rick, this is what, I just got a story. And here it is. And I'd sit there and sort of, you know, pencil it out, and I've got it in a stack of notes somewhere. Oh, wonderful. And it, this happened every uh, sort of, you know, two or three months, three mm -hmm. or four months. It was just great. And then it might happen, you know, two or six or eight times in a week. Yes, it yes. would, but it was yeah. great. And I'm telling you, nobody was better than Jerry about that, so he no, was full he... of uh, great information for that. Well, I just want to add in, I wasn't family, but I've uh, known him for 25 some odd years, and my wife Cynthia, and um, I always saw the good side of him. I always had a good joke, a uh, drop of a hat if you're there for a road trip or help out, you know, putting fresh dirt in Cynthia's garden. And, uh, uh, good story, good joke, and uh, you know, we had a we were doing a race up in Toronto, as I mentioned to a few people, and uh, he said, "Well, I'll bring your boat up for you." And so he dropped a hat, uh, hitched up the etchels, and drove all the way to Toronto and spent a week in the Royal Canadian Yacht Club, like you belong there, and. <laughs> and uh, Great time, pitch up, towed it back home, but uh, you know, it was always there for a road trip and an adventure and, uh, and a big heart. And a big cowboy hat. Yeah, and a big oh cowboy hat, yeah, for sure. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Well, I, I'll add something. I, I'd known him for about 20 years, and it seemed like the second time we actually sat down and talked, we both felt like we'd known each other for 40 or 50 years. We just really hit it off. And when he went out to Idaho, I, I, I bet I talked to him at least once a week. Every, so when he moved out there, and we just kept up our relationship, and you always get, when are you coming out? When are you coming out? Mm -hmm. When are you coming out? Come and visit. And I'm sad to say I never did. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Chance in here. Chance, do you have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> chance, take me a chance with that candy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that your dog? No, it's uh, Todd's, Todd's dog. Oh. Is yeah, Todd here? He, he has been. He has been, yep. Yeah. For the girls. He said he'd come by, but cocktail hour, he said it was a little early at 5 o'clock for him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Night owl, I guess. I thought it was 4. I thought it was 4 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that Todd? Mm -hmm. It is Todd. Your dog announced your presence. Yes. Hi, Todd. How are you? Todd? Yes, big of it. Yes, right. right. <laughs> Take over to no one. Hello, <laughs> 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 We were just sharing some memories of Jerry. Oh, yes. Where we uh, salute his life and times. I have a prayer that I'd like to read in his memory. Deep peace of the running wave to you, of water flowing, rising and falling, sometimes advancing, sometimes receding. May the stream of your life flow unimpeded, deep peace of the wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you, which fans your face on a sultry day. The air which you breathe deeply, rhythmically, which imparts to you energy, consciousness, life, deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you, who herself unmoving harbors the movements and facilitates the life of 10,000 creatures while resting contented, stable, tranquil, deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you, which stay invisible till darkness falls and discloses their pure and shining presence, beaming down in compassion 
impact on our turning world. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the watching shepherds to you, of unpretentious folk who watching and waiting spend long hours on the hillside, expecting in simplicity the coming of the Lord. Deep peace of the watching shepherds to you. Deep peace of the son of peace to you, who swift as the wave and pervasive as the air, quiet as the earth and shining like a star, breathes into his peace and his spirit, deep peace of the son of peace to you. This is Mary Rogers, adapted from the Gaelic. Oh, very nice, Debbie. Very nice. I think it's time for... Well, should we disturb the peace? Do. Should we disturb the peace we one last time? We disturb the peace in honor of Jerry. Hold on, Mark. <laughs> Earplugs or fingers in the ears, I do recommend. I'll yell out when the fire's in the hole. Ready? Say yes. Not yet. Ready enough. So when may well ask what's required to set off a cannon or have possession of a proper cannon in Massachusetts, Mark, Mark, could you tell me a little bit? Well, I'm not sure if it's legal any longer, but this is a firearms identification card that was issued to me when I was about seven years old, 4-14-1969. Of course it was. A <laughs> BS third, seven years of age, requires a firearms ID card. And there you have it. <laughs>